and as we said, new year, new skills. And today we are going to be talking about learning to express yourself through art. We have with us Kirkland Smith. Yes. Kirkland is the founder of Kirkland Smith School of Visual Arts. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. and thank you for having me. Um, it's an honor to be here. Yeah. It's yes. a great pleasure and I'm glad to share some knowledge about art with you. You said that you were going to talk about how art can be a little bit of therapy for us. Well, that is a very important word, mm -hmm. therapy, especially in this um, in our world today, mm -hmm. I think after 2020, the whole world shift and more and more people start to realize that we need something to help us to cope yes. and to help us to de-stress yes. and to help us to handle anxiety that all those things come with the changes of the pandemic and art is one of those um, areas that are vital and yeah. very important for the human soul right. at Look, this Kirkland, point. Let me, let me just pry, probe into this a bit. You have been an art, a teacher, but also an art teacher for two, three decades of your life? If I say since 1999, that won't sound too long, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I've been serving the art community since 1999. That's yeah. when I started teaching. I mean, as, as an artist and teacher. As an artist and teacher. And well, I prior to that, I was an art student. Yeah. Yes. And then once I launched into a teaching career, it is history there. And now you have started your own art. visual arts school. It is something that was in the making for many years mm -hmm. since I finished university. I came back and I expanded the program to reach out into the community and include yeah. as much as we can from the populace into the, an art program, yeah. whether from a preschool age up to yeah. senior citizen age. We include all of them. Now, you started almost at the start of the pandemic. So how has it been since then? I think bef um, before... The program has been ongoing. Mm -hmm. It was not something that um, is new since the pandemic, but because of the pandemic, it it um, forced a lot of changes and evolution in that mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. where I had to rethink mm -hmm. how to approach teaching art. Since we cannot meet in a group, yeah. we cannot have a large class. Mm -hmm. In fact, when we used to do our um, children's summer art program, we had up to like a hundred kids in one big room wow. and we used to use, work with a population like that a class size but pandemic everything changes and at this point we started out online yeah. so mm -hmm. the uh, zoom google meet those online platforms have become the um the the, the, the they call it the terms of today yeah. for learning yeah. And you've yes, also done like shrunken sizes. You have, we yes. have a number of flyers with the classes that you have starting this year. Mm -hmm. um, what I find interesting is that you're doing beginning level and also intermediate. So it's for all, all different patients. levels. All different levels from beginners to advanced. To advanced. So the, and from how young to how old? Well, once they can hold a paintbrush, <laughs> then they can do art. And I like that you have them in categories because then it does help with the terms of regulations for the pandemic because they are set in different times, they're set in different dates, and then they're set for certain sizes. Mm -hmm. So majority like of the classes, people? majority of, well, the, the classes are pretty much online. Mm -hmm. okay. And so the class size is not an issue. Okay. And, the, the, and we have from, what, five years to about um, 40, 30 adult, adults within one group when it comes to beginners or okay. also intermediate yeah because then it's a mixture yeah. and we see that um, creativity does not um, no age mm -hmm. right you, there's you're never too old to begin and you're never too young to start but can you also be not artistic enough because that's my concern with our little demonstration <laughs> here for me personally i do not hold to the idea of not being artistic okay I believe that once you are a human being from Earth, you are naturally an artist. Okay. It's a part of our DNA. We have an inclination to be creative. 
Well, we're going to test your theories today, yeah. right? Because you are going back. You're back in the Open Your Eyes classroom. Yes. Uh, yeah. For some live instruction. Before, to... before we begin. Yes. Mm -hmm. We, not, we normally, when I start with my class, I normally do a little short exercise at okay. the beginning, okay. which is where we get acquainted with the materials and the tools. Okay. I, I guide the students into how to use the materials and also how to care for the materials. So all of them, we provide the packages too. We don't just have the class, but we provide a package for the students. That's what I saw too. So you buy the materials and then you teach the class. Yes. And you provide the materials. I provide so materials. I don't have to guess when I go to the store no, what kind of paint no. to buy. I made that accommodation because of many reasons. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to provide the best materials possible yeah. at a, an affordable cost for all my students. Yes. Okay. So, so what is, are we doing? All right. So the first thing we want to do, we're going to use the primer colors. So we got... We're going to do acrylic? a little abstract. And yeah, what this is, is that? Abs all of these are acrylic oh. paints. Okay. They are both acrylic paints, and these are nice and to attract attention, right? No, this is no. part of the artistic yeah. display. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. 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 To touch I know you want to use it. I know you want to use it. But what we are going to do, we're going to do what you call an abstract expressionism. Okay. Where we are, we are only going to use the primary color, so we can share Red, one palette and blue. Okay. And blue. All right. So you see how the art already <laughs> new. You have yes. these things done. So normally we want to wet the brush. Start off with brush. One. We're using the larger one. This is a watercolor paper, mm -hmm. and you can start with any color. You, I, I'll use red just for because red is easier to see on the camera. Mm, okay. And the um, I love this yellow, so. this exercise is to help the student. Not only get acquainted with the tools, but to understand color theory. So okay. we're just using the primary colors and just mixing these as we go along. So in abstract expressionism, you are free and you are liberated to create. All right. Don't think about it. Once you start to think about it, then you know you need to take a pass. So different approaches. You can either dab the paint on, you can flicker it. Try not to flicker too much. <laughs> fall all over you. Normally we use aprons. Uh -huh. You can just use the brush strokes and while the paint is still wet I want you can drip it so the approach is different and while the paint is still wet you want to add another color to it so, so you want to wash out the paintbrush first okay. don't think about what you're doing if you start you notice the nice mixture there I always tell my students once when you start mm, to wash out the really? paintbrush you see the even the water the colors oh. are changing when the colors are mixing there and so you I can use a different color. color, yes. I will All go right. blue this time. And then wet the brush again. Make sure you get oh. sufficient water there. It's all right. Mm -hmm. And then while the paint is still wet, we can add, you can make, drip it, you can flicker it. Don't flicker too much. You can blend it. The idea is to see the color mixing while you're creating something there. You don't know what you're doing, but in the end, whatever you have, that's a nice creative work and you are seeing the colors are mixing as well. When you see the blue and the red, they, they, they mix, you see the purple comes out. So you see different colors. You can add some, wash out the paintbrush again, and then we can add some yellow. Mine looks like a Chinese New Year design. Already. It does. All right, see? Yeah. See, and then everyone sees something else. Yeah. So what's the experience been like? You, you've been doing the online uh, courses. What it does though, is it allows adults to be able to have the time to join in. Yes, it does. And one of the classes that I do is called Children and um, Family Art. And it is a class that is designed to be less technical. So it, there's not much teaching. Mm -hmm. It is more designed to be more um, therapeutic mm -hmm. to help the family to spend some time together and also to create works of art so in doing that. Adults and children within the same class. Within the same class. Or within the same family too. So you can have family time as well for that oh, particular that's awesome. course. And that's all in person or that's online? Online. All How online. How do you find you the, the, the people that are doing the, the classes respond to online art I classes? Think, um, the, the, um, the responses have been excellent. Yeah. People have welcomed the idea. And it is one way of reaching people who I, didn't, were, who I was unable to reach before the pandemic. Uh -huh. 
Okay. If you're in Toledo, if you're in um, um, Stan Creek, San Cayo, Pedro. San Pedro, Kikaka, from all over you can join the class. So it doesn't matter where you are. In fact, I had students and I still have students who are international from mm -hmm. New York, from um, Texas, from St. Vincent. So I had some students who were from different countries. But the only problem is with those in the um, Eastern Caribbean islands is the time difference. Yes. No? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Alright, so then do and if you notice, you see the blend of the mix of colors there, and you don't want to you want to you don't want to use up the space too much. Oh, you want to create a balance. That's, mistake, fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's um, fine. So you want to create a balance within the background. <laughs> no, that's okay. Look at the difference in yeah, the that's tree, okay, man. Right? That's like structure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nice. Know. That reminds me of a sky, like an evening yeah, sky. That's what I was know? going for. Sunset. So you are thinking. <laughs> So you're not being <laughs> yeah. abstract. You That's did all right. not get <laughs> I right. was not yes. a good art student. <laughs> all right, but coming back to it though, what I love, I was thinking about it when I saw like the fam children and family one. Um, it's a great way for people to come together that haven't been able to, even if they're living in different parts of the world too. Oh yes, actually I, I had some family members who are in Belize and some who were in in New York and every time we meet for class it was like a reunion. Oh. We'd be like hi, hi, hi. You know, and then it's, it's nice. Uh, yeah. It's a nice experience. And I see you're doing the paint and sip too for adults. <laughs> yes, yes that, that one is particularly designed for adults. <laughs> yes. No kids are allowed. Yes. Because no then, sipping orange juice no there. Sipping yes, orange. we sip some water, that is okay. <laughs> and it is designed to be relaxing. Sometimes you need time and space to just uh. step away from work, step away from the the um, trials of life, the step away from the stress that you know comes with being a responsible adult and productive citizen to help you to relax and start over. What's and the experience that you see? Because you know, you know what art does for you and what it can do for others. When you have first timers that come in and they go through the class, what's the what's the shift that you see in them? Okay, one, I get the same response every time at the beginning. Sir, I don't know nothing about art. Okay. I'm not an artist. That, do, that's like the storyline all over. That's right? the basic. I'm, yes, I'm yes. basic. So, yeah. That's <laughs> but then my response is always, that is why I'm here yeah. as your art teacher. And I guide you through. And then at, in the end, even they themselves are surprised at their yeah. production. So once you're finished wow, with the materials, look just at make sure that. that we always wash out the paintbrushes. It's my brain. <laughs> See, you said and you're not an artist. That's excellent work. That, yeah, excellent that's work. pretty excellent impressive. Uh, yeah. But yes, so people that are not, that are, how do people use art to de-stress? What comes with that? What are the therapies part of it? All right, so I like that question. I designed my art school with three focuses in mind mm -hmm. when it comes to teaching art. Yeah. Okay. The first one is the basic, to teach the skills, to yeah. develop the artistic intelligence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the second focus is to develop interpersonal and um, intrapersonal skills, where the person is able to express themselves, communicate mm -hmm. with others, develop some self-confidence, and also to have a sense of um, accomplishment. Mm -hmm. So those are important things. Yeah. And in that comes with being able to cope with different situations in their lives yeah. and art helps a person in that way yeah. so the person who does art has an advantage of over the person who does not do art mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that the person who doesn't do art don't know how to cope with problems in life but yeah. you art, have an extra tool yes it's an extra tool and the last area of focus is to help the person especially those who are at the student age whether primary school high school university to enhance in different areas of learning mm -hmm. in different disciplines because art develops skills that include like an eye for detail, yes. observational skills, creativity, critical mm -hmm. thinking, those things come together. Even the little ones with the manipulation of the brush. Yes. It helps you to, yes. to, to be creative and you, you touch, tap into different areas of, our, of learning that you know makes you a better person and a more productive citizen. I like that. All right. I like that a lot. And I gotta say, I, mean, I saw some of the stuff on your Facebook page. It, you know, you have uh, drawings in addition to painting. So it's, you said visual art. Yeah. It does include like a sketch. I'm sorry, I don't know the That's correct fine. terminology. That's fine. Mm -hmm. so but like the pencil and the charcoal. Visual art is, yeah. the, um, is the big umbrella of 
when it comes to looking at creative yeah. works mm -hmm. and it includes drawings, painting, graphic design, okay. um, sculpture, pottery, yeah. ceramics, all yeah. those things, filmmaking, all those things, architecture, yeah. music, yeah. those fall, well, fall in the art, but visual arts is the, the um, physical yeah. creative um, production. Yeah. So those are things that are important for us to know. Yeah, these are all the supplies. So you do provide the supplies for people when yes, they I do, do. Pa uh, purchase a package. And they have the option of different materials and different tools that you might not really find in the country. Mm -hmm. So all of this um, evolved from the need to finding not only good materials, but materials that works and yeah. that are, you know, more um, affordable. Yeah. So accessibility and affordability is one of our two um, key words when it comes to the art school as well. Well, I just think if I walked into a store and you told me to pick up paint for an art class, I would know where to start. Yeah. So it's easier if you provide it anyway because you know what I'm going or to do. Or you provide I, it. it, it I understand, and I understand <laughs> the stress of going somewhere and trying to find what you are. You know what you want to find, but you cannot find it. So, <laughs> and all over the place. So that's the only thing. And the demand is, very, um, is there. And I must point out that now, today, from when I first started teaching art umpteen years ago, the, the, the community is more embracing it. Oh, yes. Aww. Parents are more embracing it. Yeah. And uh, I have students who have taught their kids are into art because they have, are the ones. And I always tell my students that you are the ones who will promote and advocate for art in our schools and in learning. Mm -hmm. And okay. I see it. I see it. So we... here we have our finished product. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't know what this says about our three. No, see, good... I feel like people read into your art, right? And that I is mean, good. That is, that, that is, is good. yeah. Every artwork so you produce art is open to, oh <laughs> is open to interpretation. So it's subjective. Yeah. And you don't, have, you can rotate it. Okay. Yeah. And you can see the views different, uh, different views, right? Ah, I don't think about abstract true. art. So you can rotate it and see. So, so sometimes I can decide you which way I yes. Like so if you have a nice abstract piece, you can hang it up anywhere on the wall, right? right? Landscape or portrait, and it's fine. It's and you know my students are always surprised at it, and it is years of processing all these ideas and thinking about, you know, what is it that I that that is needed when it comes to teaching art. Mm -hmm. You know, and I I think this is one of the great things from when we started. It's almost like we fixate so much on how things are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Abstract art, especially, gives you the opportunity to just do. And you feel relaxed. Yeah. And you're free. Yeah. In yeah. The end. Not so much April because she planned for us. Well, it still, it <laughs> yeah. still made me feel better. <laughs> you cannot leave the, can the um, canvas. Right. Okay. So okay. What yes. we're doing now, we're going to work at a faster pace. Okay. okay. Yes. Good. And we need faster. <laughs> at the same time, we're going to use the same brush. If you notice, we're using small amounts of paint, yeah. but at the same, and we still have paint left over. Okay. And I always encourage, when, even when teaching art, I encourage my students to be mindful of the materials. You want to take care of the materials, you want to take care of the tools, and you want to be conscious of the environment as well. Okay. Especially when we use water and when we dispose of um, different things, different materials in the end, yeah. we try to be as conservative as possible. So those are different things that comes yeah. with teaching art. It's not just about art, it's about life skills as well. Yeah. So Kirkland, let's, uh, what's been the interest so far for your uh, sessions for this year? Mm, interest, you just, yeah. that's a big word and it has me thinking a lot. <laughs> I mean, are spaces still available? Yes. Spaces are always available. Yeah. Every class session is designed to, um, to, to um, finish within that space and that time. Okay. So I try to structure it that way where we don't have to say, man, we didn't finish tonight, let's try to finish it later, another class. No, mm -hmm. because I know that sometimes some people want to start, but they cannot start on that day and time, but they come okay. jump into another class. So they, they, they have that liberty as well. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever had a student come in and say, this is what I want to learn? Yes, I have that. I have and, that. And do they learn that? And they do. Okay. They do. Right? We take <laughs> no, because you know sometimes art takes you in a different direction and yeah. you they that learn is true. something else. That is true. And I think one thing, what I've learned in the past, that uh, when it comes to teaching art, 
I never push the idea of, oh, you can become an artist or you can become an art teacher yeah. and things like that. Because we don't learn mathematics to become a math teacher or a mathematician. True. Or, lang True. or English to be a linguist or anything like that. Art is a part of learning. It's, it's a, a part skill of, set. Yes, and it's something that we want to also foster in our students. Because in the past, I've realized that when parents used to um, realize that their kids love art and they want to, be a, and they, they want to do art, they get scared and be like, no, you can't become an artist when you get older. That, that's in the past. Yeah. But now you again. understand now, right? Yeah. That, good. So right. what we're going to do on this small canvas, so we're going to do a little beach scene. Oh. You follow along with me. Oh. Okay. And we work with the space. Normally, some artists will blend the colors first and then put it on the canvas. But we're going to do our blending right on the canvas. Okay. So, okay. so where do we start? First, we want to do, we're going to work with the sky. And then from there, we work our way down to the sea and then try to make a beach and okay. then put some coconut trees. <sighs> now, I know, I, 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 and I see the stress <laughs> coming out, right? The anxiety is building and that is okay. So what you want to do, we always start with the sky. So I don't matter if we mix these colors here. Okay. So we can, we can, so we start with the sky with the blue. Just get some blue in. All right, All right. enough, and make sure you're wet. We, we oh, just to, yeah, just add some more water because we're diluting it, and then we start on top, and just spread that out, spread that off from one end to the next. And if feel if a paintbrush feels dry, just touch a little water in it. The idea is we want to. How high is my? How low is my sky going? Oh, you could over go half watch. I saw it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, you can hold it in your hand like that. That's okay. No, you can add more blue if you feel like you need more blue. The idea is from one end to the next, across the canvas. Don't be afraid to wet the paintbrush. I chose this topic because I know um, it will create some form of anxiety, you know, so we feel like, ah, I don't know if I can do that. Okay. Good. So before it's it, this paint dries quickly. So okay. what you want to do while it's still wet, you're on the, uh, we are going to add some white to this. Just dip some white, and the white will help to create that little um, cloud-like cloud-like look. Different um, values in the sky. Some darker blues. Create some lighter blues. So about halfway, so we are, we are there. All yes. right, nice, nice. Let's blend that up. Let's blend that up. That's good. So we want to work on the C. We're going to start again. Just blend it in. Nice. Spread that out. There you good. go. Yeah, now yes, it's just let loose. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh -huh. We're going to add some more blue here at okay. the bottom. Try to. All right. So we're running. We're, we're down to the last few minutes. So let's yes. see. We'll do the speed round oh, version. Mm -hmm. So you notice the sky where it's it's light. Mm -hmm. When you add that blue, it makes it the area darker. So it creates like we call a contrast. Mm -hmm. So a differentiate between the sky and the sea. Just the same thing you did with the sky is the same thing I'm going to do with the sea. So let's go and spread that out. Okay. What, what I like about the art classes online too is that um, the students who want to advance to the other groups, they can move on from beginners into intermediate. How low is going? Right about, let's say okay. about the um, tell me how far to away. Tell me where for God. Yes, all the way down. <laughs> it's all right. I'm going to put a little yellow in this to create a little distinction. Maybe we create a little, like a little greenish look Please. on the sea, and almost like a little. I want to blend it to blue. So, yes, little waves. So, want some squiggly lines. Don't want to look too green because blue and yellow may give us green. Mm -hmm. Give it a nice little. Uh, well, we want to differentiate between the sky and the sea. That's the idea there. I feel like I'm in Bob Ross's video. I know. <laughs> a lot of us grew, grew up with Bob Ross. Yes. He was one of our. PBS, PBS, that's icon. Right. Yes, and that's what you're talking. You want to give it a little green. Here. And then when they start to talk about Bob Ross, it kind of tells of 
or, or generation, yeah. right? <laughs> so let's go and mix it up with the yellow. Blend that in. Okay. Next blend up. it in. Go a little wavy, wavy like this. Yeah. Back and forth. Jag it. Jag it. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 man. You see, you're not an artist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's All nice. Right. That's nice. So, we, well, if you want, like you could add some white to that. You don't have to. And you notice the water helps to dil um, dilute the paint to yes. make it transparent. It also lightens it as well. So for the beach, we're going to add some brown and white with brown. And probably some blue on top of that. Okay. So you go ahead. All Remember right. the beach is not even, so you don't want no smooth edges. Yes. You can make it jaggy as you would like. I didn't wash out my paintbrush. Yes, go ahead. Normal, I tell the students, once you're changing colors, like for the beginners, you want to wash out the paintbrush so the colors don't contaminate. This goes all the way to the bottom? All the way to the bottom. That is the, that is the beach. That's the land. You can add some white to that. You can add some touch, touch of um, black to give it some darker values. All right. Mm -hmm. Just oh, sure. use the canvas. I think I put too much. It's all right. I had to mess up my fingers. It's all right. <laughs> So you could hold it on the edge like this if you don't want yeah. to. I have a black sand beach here. It's all right. <laughs> That's fine. There's a pink beach We're, somewhere I mean, in the world. Volcanic, I'm on a volcanic island. Mm -hmm. There's a Hawaii pink. man, Hawaii right yeah. there. Good. All right. So we have a nice little scenery here. We all put some coconut tree here. So we're going to use coconut trees mm -hmm. we're going to use white because we want to create a little contrast there before we add any color everybody good am i going too fast that's all right nice nice awesome excellent okay. excellent work all right so let's start with white you already have so white on your classes up now let's let's see what we can do to close it off yes mm -hmm. when it comes to coconut trees or any tree you always want to remember gravity that the, the trunks are what widest at the ground level and then as you go higher it gets thinner and thinner you don't want to go too um too wide at the top and narrow at the bottom because then it topple over right <laughs> and then so when you do <laughs> your coconut tree you could try it try it that's all right that's all right that's all good good yes man excellent excellent then just fill that space in you could add brown you could add um any color this is an imaginary um scene it doesn't have to be realistic so your coconut leaves doesn't have to look exactly the same just the idea of how to construct it and create it Let, let's see how you do the leaves quickly and then you can finish up afterwards sometimes i tell my students take a pause look at what i'm doing okay. and then you can follow afterwards so when you do the coconut tree the leaves you start with a little, like a little arc, and then you have some lines coming down. I notice a student not paying attention there. Who, me? <laughs> this, stu this student move ahead into the book yeah, and never yeah, wait yeah, for instructions. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right, that's Oops. all right. And that's well, the good thing about art, you know, art gives you observation skills. So even while, oh, while I'm painting like this, I can notice what my students are doing. So I'm still watching both of you while doing this. So there's a lot of lines we use here, a lot of lines. We're doing here so you have a nice little coconut tree there all right mm -hmm. <laughs> i like my sky and see the rest is um <laughs> <I'm in. laughs> well this is like a crash course right i know right so you, you don't you cannot to create an, an excellent or a good piece yeah. of art you need at least three hours this was of the, work this was the five minute version mm -hmm. i'm gonna keep mine entirely abstract no yes, man. Yes. no fine lines detectable. You, could, you could add more um coconut trees afterwards all right, all right so that's yes. what we got there all right yes man that's good all right that's excellent kirkland this is a crash course mm -hmm. i'm gonna leave april is very dedicated towards completing <laughs> her trees <laughs> so fine. um I want to say thank you for coming in once again. How do people get in touch with you if they're interested in joining any of the classes? They can email me mm -hmm. at ksmith3teach at gmail.com or they can call or WhatsApp 628-6122. Once right. you call WhatsApp, I respond 
as quick you as possible. You do small groups face to face, yes. and you do bigger online classes. Yes. Uh, children, adults, beginner, intermediate, or advanced. advanced. All of it is possible. And also, including that, you have um, training for the CSEC visual arts for high schoolers, and you have keep art and design for um, tertiary level students. And you have teacher training too for pedagogical nice. um, skills in how to teach art okay. to children as well. Thank you so wow. much for Thank coming in, allowing us to have some art therapy this morning. Yes. That is it for us, April. We're out of, out time. of time. We tried. Yeah. We tried. We think did we excellent. did. Excellent. We'll, 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 we'll continue painting as we go to yes. close. Yes. Remember to tune in tomorrow morning at 6.30 when you open your eyes. And start your morning, right? Until then, keep your eyes, your mind, and your heart open. We'll see you soon. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your day. Thank you. See you. Thank you.